what what has been your response to that in terms of keeping your kids in public school? Yeah, so I've always come from so I grew up in Christian private schools my whole life. Okay. And you kind of make decisions, you know, obviously based off the word, based off wise counsel, but a lot of it's based off your experience. Yep. So my experience in Christian private education was, uh, for, at least in my experience, was religion or Christianity became like another subject. So math, mm-hmm. science, literature, religion. Yeah. You go to the chapels, mandatory chapels, you sit and listen. So for me, it just became this message that I heard over and over and over and over again. And it... Did it lose its power? I mean, no, because the word never loses its power, but it just became something where everyone's Christian, everyone's attending classes. And for me, uh, rebellion looked like uh, sleeping around in drugs, right? It, it's like well, the, the party scene. Um, my kind of walking away from that, I said, well, I, I kind of feel like it's in every young heart to rebel. Um, so for a Christian to be in the public school system, what would rebellion look like? Well, rebellion would look like following Jesus. So I've seen in my oldest, um, I mean, he's been in public school most of his life, just this, like, the sandpaper that comes from ideas outside of Scripture and his opportunity to kind of push back in a mm-hmm. respectful way, but to raise his hand and say, hey, That's interesting, yeah. hey, teacher, I'm going to, can I challenge that idea? Like, he was introduced to evolution in third grade, and we, we knew that that was the time in curriculum that was coming, so he was prepared and ready to go, and he had was able to have a very like low level debate right but he's talking to other kids you know where kids are yeah. like so i loved that because it's like you are you're standing for your faith at a young age you're you're being regirded in these ideas yeah he's learning a valuable lesson for but sure. now in sixth grade i'm like because that's always been my, my my stance some of the some of the the propaganda is just so heavy mm-hmm. and it's on a daily basis that it kind of just feels like a waste of time yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm actually wasting your time asking you to go to the school, and then I, another thing, and this is another topic for another day, but um, pornography has seemed to really yeah. just corrupted so much of our youth mm-hmm. that um, I think even talking about sex or joking about sex or you know who's sleeping with who kind of was like what I grew up with in school, but now the depravity, the level of depravity, nuts, and the conversations right. that are happening at the lunch table are so obscene. I'm like, bro. I just I don't get you out of school just because, like, I don't I don't want your mind even to expose with some of these these ideas. Yeah. So it's a it is a balance for that we're praying through and we're always praying through it. But that's okay. So it's, we're uh, we're in process. I I, re, I saw yesterday one of the guys that I listen to from time to time pull out the book in Loudoun County that's been getting us so much uh, kind of uh, backlash. Um, and it was just absolutely atrocious, man. Those people should be utterly ashamed of themselves. They are abusing children with the stuff that they're subjecting them yeah. to. Well, uh, for, in fourth grade, my son had to write a paper, and I've talked about this before, but it was, hey, when, um, what do you think that the, the young Indian boy was feeling when the white man came into his village and massacred his family? What do you think he was feeling? And it's like, wow. Well, that is that's a complex conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Because there were some things that happened, atrocities and stuff. But there's there's a lot of data and well, information that goes yeah, into that. But to just to say that, or the other thing is like, hey, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration Declaration of Independence, great document, right? But he owned slaves. Yeah. So how do we how do you grapple with that? So you can see that in even in third grade there was this undermining of America and this like again it was just like this this unhooking of huh, man, I, maybe America's not that great. Yeah. You know, so it's so it's all that stuff you grapple with. But as a parent, I feel like you have to be more engaged as a parent if your kids are in public school than if they're in a home school or a private 100%. school setting. Yeah, I, I found myself doing that the other night too. Like the, his teacher said he's reading a book, and I was just like, cool. And then I thought I went to a meeting about what's going on in the public school system here, and I was like, I don't need to take anything for granted. I need to kind of check out that book and see what it's doing. And nonetheless, I want to be a hands-on parent, uh, but. I, that that goes into kind of my belief, and I think you probably have the same idea I do about this. Um, I think, let me just preface what I'm about to say by saying, I think this is a case-by-case basis. I mm-hmm. think this is a child-by-child basis. Absolutely. You have to know your own kid um, because you can easily let your kind of pseudo-crusade moral stance get in the way of your child's development. You need to be cognizant of that. But I also think if you remove all of the righteous kids out of the public school system, then you might be doing a disservice in just delivering it over to those who are not fortunate enough to be able to homeschool or private school 
um, and then they're just totally subjected to this. So the public school system is probably not going anywhere, but we can actually, like, we should stand up personally as parents, but then we should also teach our kids how to fight. Now, we have to do this the right way, but it sounds like that's what you're doing with your kid, and I think the public school system is a place where that lesson can be learned, and so I think we should be but uh, but I almost wonder, too, if we are not teaching them the opposite lesson by pulling them out of public school, which is when we have a fight on our hands, we run away and we go hide. And I, I keep yeah. I wrestle with that. It's, so I don't I don't think it's as clear cut as get your kids out of there yesterday. Um, right. I, but that and that's a strong message. Yeah. Get them out, you know. Um, and I get it. I think it's it goes to an individual calling and the, the child and their makeup and their ability. Um, but if you look at our culture, the left and all the bad ideas of the left have yeah. taken over the college, ca- higher education. No doubt. Like they've conquered that. 100%. If you look at it as, as a battle, they have taken it. They have a stronghold there. And I think what we've been experiencing that's been shocking is that battle has now moved to high school, middle school, and elementary. Yeah. It wasn't there before. Yeah. By the way, I do want to say this. We, we have this sentiment, and I think we need to stop doing it, where we're like, Twitter's not the real world. Well, it's not, but it also says something about what's going on in the world. So we, take, we don't take these things seriously enough. And we used to say, well, these college kids, when they, when they graduate and they get into the real world, you know, they'll, they're, uh, they're silly ideas that they got from these radical professors that will be tested against the crucible of real life, and they'll change. But actually, the opposite is happening now, is that yep. they're starting to shape culture. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I think, uh, I th- I, my, and we did a, a class on reclaiming education, and we kind of said the same thing. Like, I just think you need to pray. And, but going back to calling, like, what is my calling in my culture? Mm-hmm. Like, what what is my responsibility? And I think, too, with education, what is the calling that God's put on our family or on my student? And and maybe it's like, hey, homeschool to fifth grade, and then maybe private school, middle school, and then you might find that God tells you to put your kid in, in public high school. Yeah. I think every family is going to be different, but there is a tendency to to escape, right? Yeah. Like if we could all live like in this farmland and it's Christian ideas and we're safe and we're like away from culture, right? Yeah. It's like the village. Yeah. Right? That Shyamalan <laughs> movie. Yeah. You know, but so there's something that's like, oh, like that would be great. And it's kind of like a heaven on earth thing. Yeah. We're like, everything's right. Everything's just. And we're just not going to get that until Jesus returns. But I yeah. think to, to run into the hills, you know, would... You know, it's just the the church is called to be in in the culture. You can catch brand new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Huberman every Monday and weekly bonus episodes to keep you thinking throughout the week. But you have to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new episodes drop. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like this video and share it with friends.